Ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck, we would like to add a welcome to Florida Mass. Butterflies. You have butterflies? Good butterflies or bad? Hello. Lady! What's up? Place is a mess. Oh my god, I'm sure it's not. I can't invite anybody over because it's a mess. Oh my god, it looks so Alright, I'll just clean. stay out in the hall. <laughs> no, just get in here. <laughs> I'm turning on some lights. Don't do that. I was born and raised in Philadelphia in 1951. I was one of triplets. I was uh, two pounds and 11 ounces. I was the only one who survived from the, uh, the birth. Um, we were born the 26th of April, one died the 27th, the other one died the 28th. The vision has always been bad. I had a little bit of vision on my left eye. The right eye, I never had any vision in it at all. Because when I was born, I was uh, premature and we put in an incubator and there was too much oxygen in the incubator. So it reacted as though it was um, a foreign object. And my left eye caught up with my right eye. When I get depressed about things, I start thinking about my other two brothers. Okay, next little street should be Parrish. I mean, uh, Wilton. Okay, take that. Mm-hmm. Where my GPS right now? <laughs> okay, this is the 400 block. Okay. Go down to the 300, 300 block. It's the next street. This is Parrish. Okay. The uh, fourth house on the right-hand side. So if I make a left? No, no. Up oh, straight ahead up on the next block, yeah. Fourth house. On the right hand side. Do you see one, a side yard? Two. On the right hand side over here. On the right? Yeah, like a little alley? Yeah. I used to live right here. Oh. What does it look like? It's brick, like a yellow tan brick with red siding around the windows and like a Oh my god, they screwed it up. What did it used to look like? It was beautiful at one time. Really? Yeah. Red? Oh my god. Norman, what what are some of the difficulties of being blind and living alone? Um, like, for instance... Yeah, I, okay, I, a lot of times I feel very much alone. I'm by myself a lot. But to combat that is difficult also. Because you need to find somebody that's worse off than yourself and try to help them to do whatever it is they have they have to do in you know in life that helps me get out of myself which is a good way i think of combating the loneliness so i figured we'll do mail and then write your checks out okay and then, and then we'll eat nice Them, Kathleen's friendship means a lot to me because she reads my mail, first of all, writes out my checks. <laughs> and she's always there for an ear if I need to talk to her about something that's going on in my, in my life. She's very, very positive. With, with a positive attitude such as Kathleen's, you can't help but be positive because it's uh, infectious in a good way. It's boiling. Well, are you hot? No, it's boiling. How did you hear? How do you hear that with the music? Mm. All right. What's boiling? The curry? Yeah. Shit. All right. Ooh. Oh. Brown one. Excuse my French. Maybe we'll let put a light full that now you're just bragging. There are times when I get a little bit nervous about things and she evens me out. This is Norman. What's up, Norman? Hey, How you doing? Hi. Fine, thanks. How about yourself, man? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, have you traveled much? No. Yeah. I always wanted to go to Italy. Oh, yeah? I've been my passion ever since I was 12. Why 12 years old? Because there was uh, one of my neighbors. Her name was Mrs. Ritchie. She's a very nice lady. Spoke with her a lot of times. With, uh, break, broken English, <laughs> but at that particular time, there were telephones you could pick up. 
talk okay. to your friends or whoever, and, it, and sometimes you would pick up a phone and you'd hear a conversation. And I would hear conversations that she would have. And then how did you develop that passion through the years? I just love it. You know? Yeah. I'm still dreaming of it. Oh, really? So, yeah. Wow. I'm still dreaming of it. Yeah, I feel like that's when you know you can actually speak it. It's when you dream in it or you can think in it. For me, it's this project, like I want to meet 10,000 people. You're the 1,536th person, so. 1,536? Yeah. Cool. So, so I'll take a picture with you and I'll post it and people will know a little bit about your life. Well, it was wonderful to meet you. Thank nice you. To meet you. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sitting down with me. All right, we're going left. Okay. Crossing the street. Hey, Alangalo? I mean, is it on the corner? It's on the corner. Okay. I'm going to get some hot pizza. Hey, who, who's this guy here? Who? This is Norman. Norman. Hi. How are you doing, Norman? Doing well, thanks. How are Norman you, sir? Norman the foreman. How are you? That's me. Doing well, thank you. like my hard-working brother. Right. He's older than me. That's Ralph. Hi. How are you, Ralph? I heard your name, Norman. Yes, sir. How yeah. are you, Norman? Doing well, thank you, sir. Who would you like to sit? We have a table here. Uh, come on, Norm. Okay. Let's go this way. Uh, grazie. Mi piace, mi piace. Mi piace. Si. Bravo. Grazie. Uh, okay. Uh, I just threw a dialect in. I know, I know. I, 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 I capito. I capisco il dialetto. Capisco. Ma... So he speaks a real Italian. <laughs> That's what that is. What do you say? Capisco means I do understand. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I know. Instead of saying, yeah, I know, you say capisco. Si. Capisco is a. Um, true Italian, you know, lingo. Here's the mayonnaise. All right. And what yeah. you do, just dip a little bit. Mm -hmm. Dip a little bit. If you like it, fine. Like that. Yeah. There you go. This is so good. <laughs> no. Okay, Norman. All right, Norman. It was a pleasure having you here. Hopefully you come back again. I will. Okay? Time for a nap. <laughs> I, can't, I can't thank you too enough. What? You can't. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 67 in the I know. It's going to be here before we know it. I know. What's one of the best experiences you've had in life so far? I discovered that, that God loves me. That's my best, I think. Um, wherever I go, I always try to do the best I possibly can. And, some um, one day when I was working, I got a, a, an appreciation award from all my coworkers, and I was like, I, I was overcoming. I was so overcome with emotion, I went to the bathroom and cried. <laughs> I said, God loves me. So, do you have any like goals, or do you have anything else you want to accomplish right oh, now? Oh my or? word! Yeah, I still want to go to Italy. <laughs> yeah. I still want to do that. One day, I was reading Norman his mail, and out of nowhere, he was like, I think I want to get my passport. And I was like, yes, 100%. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Rome. But who would I go with? How would I get there? So I was just speechless because I knew the answer. He has no immediate family. His friends are not in a position to take him anywhere. I knew that if I at least didn't try, I would regret it and feel, like, guilty for not trying. But soon after, I realized that if I'm going to do this right, I'm going to need help. And that's when I uh, reached out to Skylar. Kathleen released a video of her and Norman, and that was my first introduction to Norman. And I was immediately in love. So the past couple months, Kathleen and I have been hanging out with, filming, interviewing, and really learning how extraordinary Norman really is. We learn that he's fluent in Italian, and that it's been his dream since 12 years old to get to Italy. Over the past, what, two years we've known each other? I have learned so much about you, and I'm continually learning. With this documentary we're doing, you've really inspired people without even knowing it. And so much so that we decided it was time to give back to all you've done. And we actually raised enough to get you to Rome, Italy before your 67th birthday in April. I just dumbfounded. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. <laughs> we have it, so will you go? I don't think so. What? 
<laughs> Luch is gonna say that. Oh my god, Norman! My heart's thumping! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Norman. Right back at you, Skylar. All right, I'll give you a hug after. Okay, good. <laughs> so, the question is, are you ready for an adventure to go to Rome, Italy? Whatever you sell, I'm buying. <laughs> That's a new one. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Come in, come in, come in. <laughs> we're, we're selling a ticket to uh, Italy. Yeah, interesting. It's a one-time offer. Okay. Are you interested? Uh-huh. Here's three for you. All right. For the fountain. One, two, three. Norman, I brought my fanny pack, too. Did you? Mm -hmm. What color is yours? Navy blue. Oh, yours is lighter than mine. Mine is black, uh -huh. I think. Uh-huh, yes. You guys didn't send me the memo. <laughs> Fanny pack's locked and loaded. Locked and loaded. <laughs> All right, let's zip up the suitcase. We'll head downstairs and we'll order the Uber. We're in the air. Norman. Norman. Nice Good to morning. meet you. Leonardo. There we go. Fits like a glove. Is that comfortable for you? Si, signore. Oh, good. Very good Italian. <laughs> she has lived in Italy. No? No. No. It, it, uh, this is his the prima volta here. qui. It's incredible. So you talk so well. Oh, grazie, signore. My compliment. compliment. Grazie. Veramente. Norman, grazie. You can see his face. He's shocked. <laughs> He is shocked. È vero? <laughs> I'm shocked. Really, Shukante? I'm really shocked. <laughs> Shukante? <laughs> Ready, Norman? Hi. Hi. <laughs> so is that the, the camera on? That yeah, on? it's on. It's all, all on. All on. Yeah. So I don't say bad words. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you from? USA? So I... Si, sí, Philadelphia. Ah, Philadelphia? Si. Sí. Or did you study Italian? So to tell me the Un truth. Poco. Five years ago I bought uh, CDs with... Um, Italian language. Wow. I mean, now we are going in one of the best parts of the city. Oh. It's the orange garden. Mm -hmm. And now there's a, the smell of the orange flowers. Oh. amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in this park, uh, this little park ends with a wonderful view of the entire city. Wow. wow. All right, steps. Step. Down. Mm -hmm. Do you know this song? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go yeah. listen to it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Incredible. And a violin player had Norman crying. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the power of music. Yeah. See. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming America too. Yeah. Huh. When I was young. Yeah. Oh. Have you been here? I, yeah. I would like to. Yeah. Mm. I would like to to visit your country to to make a real barbecue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to learn the football, the American mm -hmm. football. I see Bruce Springsteen here. Oh, okay. Oh. From. Uh huh. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Two years ago, in the Circus Maximus. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want a I wanna picture with Norman. You are cool, Norman. You are the best. You are the best. What was your favorite part of the tour? Being here. Just being with him? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> this is a good time.
time, isn't it? I've never seen these moves before. Never have I either. You actually look really good with I those glasses. Oh. No, I meant Norman. <laughs> <laughs> I do not care if I ever wake up. Uh, happy birthday, Norman, for my friend Sierra. Um, Anna said, Norman is a badass. Happy birthday, Norman. <laughs> happy birthday, Norman. Cheers. Happy birthday. So what does it feel like to be uh, 67? I don't really know. <laughs> I cannot compare it with anything or to anything because I've never been 67 before. And I don't know if I'm supposed to feel old or whatever that's supposed to mean. It says happy birthday on the plate. It looks awesome. You got to blow out the candle, though. We got some champagne. Oh, my God. Happy birthday. All right, Norman. Happy birthday. This is one of my first operas that I've, I've ever heard in life. I, I can't read music like a normal person could, but I can see it in my head. Scores, notes. Is that why music is so special to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of paints pictures. Sure it does. How do you feel right now in this moment? I feel like I'm still living a dream. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Me too. forget this this whole event. It's Kathleen and Skyler. Hello. 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 This is a mess, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Love the collared shirt, Norman. Going out of my comfort zone was very difficult. Because I'm used to just being in my own my own little world as they say. Anyway, that's my mom. Hey, mom, this is Skylar. Skylar, that's my mom. We look alike. Oh, yeah. But it felt exciting. It was hard at the time. But I was with friends, so I felt at ease. Kathleen's back there, Ma. She's cooking. Hi, Mrs. Kathleen. 
The whole experience was quite an eye-opener, I think, for the three of us. Because I think there are things that the three of us have not uh, discovered until we had this experience together. I would want the viewers to know that are experiencing this documentary is to try to find someone else that may be in the same situation as yourself or maybe a little worse off than yourself. And by being with them, to help them to do whatever it is they need to get done, it helps you at the same time. Instead of you just being a blessing to them, you wind up being for them to be a blessing to you. What, what would you like people to know about you? This is Norman. <laughs> I can't think of anything else other than that. Just know that, that it, it's me. Thank you.